Right now I'm here on a job site with Wood Wizards owner Arnie Mazza. Arnie, tell us a little bit about what's happening here on this job. Well, Roger, this is a, a set of home, a neighborhood that was built, uh, it was built 20 years ago. And all these homes have beams that stick out, like this beam over here. They go all the way through the house. And they were all rotted on the end, and we used the Wood Wizard system to rebuild them and make them stronger than they were. Now, what was all the Wood Wizard products? That would probably be too long for us to describe here. Let's show the people how it works. All right, Roger, that sounds good. Let's show them the whole process. This is the Wood Wizard Repair System. That's a permanent wood repair for dry rot repair, termite repair, and various other wood destroying insects. We're going to go in detail with all these products, but let's describe what they are. We start with BioCleaner, then a borate product, then a bonding agent, the repair dough, and a putty compound with a thickener, and you can create various textures with these additives. And we have personal protection equipment and accessory items. Now, Arnie Mazza, this is your company, and tell us about the rot that, and, and termite damage here. Well, Roger, this is what we're faced with most of the time. We find wood like this that's been damaged by dry rot or termites, but instead of tearing it out, with the, with the Wood Wizard system, you can repair this damage without tearing it out and leaving it in place. You won't damage the waterproofing of your structure, and it's a permanent repair that will be treated and last you for many, many years. So now we're going to show people how they can take this and go to something that looks like new. That's right. There are thousands of repairs done with the Wood Wizard system already today and in existence over 10 years that are still as good as the day we put them in. Now, Arnie, with this damage, it needs to be dug out to a certain degree in order to get to some substantial wood in here. And these are great tools to use. Um, how would they go about doing that? There are a lot of different ways we can do that. Um, if we're on a job site, just the, uh, the hand wire brush will get down to where we are right now. Otherwise, we use some power tools that will create some of the same action that we need to remove that rotted or termite portion. Some of them are right here in the table. Whatever you basically have will work. There's no set amount, but you want to get down to where the wood is where it is now, where you'll see it's lighter in color. And uh, that's how we'll get it before we do the process. Okay, what we're going to do is we'll take this uh, uh, wire brush right here, and we're going to we're going to repair this piece right right in the middle of this to show you what it's all about. We're going to take this, and we're going to uh, clean out a substantial part of the wood. Okay, you've done a great job. We've just cleaned this much of the wood, so you could see what needs to be done. The soft wood has been taken out. The hardwoods remaining. Uh, soften the little edge here. Soften the little bit of leading edge here. And this tool is very efficient and quick. Now, Arnie, what do you have to do from here? It's really important now that we clean this before we prepare it for the treatment. And we clean that with. And here's BioClean. Now, how do they use this? This could be a spray-on product, or you can inject it. We spray it on for this instance. It goes over the raw wood, not over your painted surfaces. Gotta go over the raw wood. If a little bit gets on the paint, is it a problem? Not a problem at all. So now, what you do is liberally sp spritz it on and make sure it's it's completely saturated, is that correct? Make it to the point to where it's going to just run off. So even if it runs across your existing wood, it's not a problem. This is, this is a pretty all neutral base, slightly acidic, all-purpose cleaner that works well. So you can use it for cleaning many other things, but it cleans the wood fantastic and leaves no solvents or residuals. Well, how long do we have to wait? You know, this is going to about 5-10 minutes. Give it 15 minutes at the most. It's going to soak right in there. This wood's very dry when you got it to this point, and you'll be ready for the treatment process. What happens if you have to leave it longer? Would that be a problem? Not at all, Roger. It's, it's already soaking into the wood, and that's what we want. What is the next step that we're going to do here? What we're going to do now is we're going to treat it, whether you had dry rot for the fungus, different than a mold, or if you had termites. We have the borate product that has been around for many, many years and has proven itself in the field. It's professional use quality that you have access to 
to treat it. Now that we've done the BioCleaner and it's set up for a minimum of five minutes or so, we determine whether or not it's termites or dry rot. If it's dry rot, this is as far as you have to go for that product. But if it's termites, Arnie, what do you have to do in addition to that? What we're going to do now, if it was termites, is we are going to drill some holes down the depth of this wood because we know that most of the termites have entered they eat with the grain of the wood and we want to be sure and treat for those guys so by drilling into them a, a number of zigzag holes we're going to inject our next process which is our fungicide termiticide so you won't have this reoccurring problem. Now they wouldn't drill all the way through. They would drill down how far would you go and how would you determine how deep to go? So depending on how deep your wood is, I like to make a mark with a piece of tape so that we don't go through and we don't want our liquid borate product to run out of it. We want it to stay within that lumber. So anything, the wood. anything below this is fine. We just know not to go any further in drilling any further than that tape. I think that's a great idea. Okay, now that we have drilled the holes for the borate product, tell us about how you mix it, Arnie. This bag will treat up to 200 square feet when you mix it with one gallon of water. It'll dilute very easily and turn into a clear solution. But if you're gonna mix less, such as in this 16 ounce bottle, you only need three ounces of the borate product. Should you be wearing gloves? Uh, you always want to wear gloves protection for yourself. You, you know, it might be an irritant to you, so we always highly recommend. Now, Arnie, I've put gloves on, so this next phase is we're going to use a borate product, and you've done an excellent job cleaning. We put the bio cleaner on, and you can see it's already soaking in, and we've drilled the holes, and we're going to put the borate. A solution down these holes. Now tell us a little bit about how you mix it and why should we do this? Well the borate product's been around for many many years and is proven to protect against dry rotten termites. We mix this bag with one gallon of water and that'll cover 200 square feet but Roger we're only doing a small amount here so we're only going to use 16 ounces and you're going to mix three ounces of that powder and then the rest you're going to reserve for future projects or protection you might need. Okay, great. Let's just start with, you've already pre-mixed this uh, borate product. Let's go ahead and let's spray it on and liberally. Now, does it, might, does it matter if it gets on the wood painted surface? No, it won't affect it at all. And just like the bio cleaner, you've opened up the pores in this wood now. It's going to penetrate into there, so you've done a good job. You got it right to run off. It's going to take about 15 minutes to soak in and then you'll you'll be good to go to start the repair process. Now, let's take, people might wonder what this is, but this is a syringe that's got a large orifice at the end. How it works is you pull this out or you draw it up, one of the two. You take your borate product, you draw out the material. Now what we would do is just go ahead and fill that hole up with borate. And what does that do? So that, the water is really only a carrier, Roger. As soon as that water soaks into the wood and it's going to soak into it pretty good, it's going to leave that powder that you just mixed in and that protects it against the dry rot or any of the termites or other wood destroying insects that may be in this piece of wood. This system is turning out to be so exciting to be able to take an old piece of wood that you don't have to take off your house and be able to clean it up and to do these processes. What's our next step, Arnie? Next step, we're gonna apply bonding agent. It's a part A, part B mixed in equal parts, and it's gonna bond the dough to this existing piece of wood. How long will I have to wait for the borate to dry to use the bonding agent? The borate product we put in the holes is already being absorbed in the water, but the surface borate product Let's give it 15 to 20 minutes at about 70 degrees temperature, just like we did the bio cleaner, and then it'll be ready for the bonding agent. Now we're ready for the exciting bonding agent. It kind of petrifies the wood. Now Arnie, tell us a little bit about uh, the two different color bottles here. Well, it's important for the Wood Wizard system. We designed it 
that everything's going to be mixed in a ratio of one to one. It's easy. So if we have two ounces of part A, we're going to add two ounces of part B. But we've also tinted them because when you're handling these bottles, you want to make sure you have one of the A and one of the B. Two ounces of the A, two ounces of the B. And, uh, that way you don't get them confused. We found it a lot easier and less confusion that way. Show us how you mix this. Okay. It's important that you use a measuring cup that has increments on it. So two ounces of A, two ounces of B. It's really important. It was designed that way and engineered that way if we're going to get the bond that we need. Now let's mix that. That's the clear product. And that is two ounces. Now we're going to add two ounces of the B. Now how long do they have to be able to work with this? Now they're going to stir this up. We're going to slightly stir this up. You'll see how it's separated in there. You just need to gently stir it. I'll hold this. All right, great. How long do they have to stir that? Well, you know, we like to give it a couple of three minutes just to stir, just so you can see it will become one color. Systems, we've made everything one to one and we've also made it so that everything will be one color when you're done. That looks about good right there. Great. I see you have a syringe and you have a brush. What would you do first? Inject these holes and then we will brush the outside to get the bonding going. We don't want this to dry out. It's going to stay at 70 degrees until it uh, starts setting up. You have about 15-20 minutes and we're going to want to put the next part of it, the dough right on top of it. Now Arnie, now that you've mixed this, we have two accessories here. We have a brush and it can be a cheap chip brush and a syringe. And the first thing we want to do is we want to fill these holes with this resinous material. Suck up the uh, material and what you want to do is inject in these holes. Better to do this first, Roger, because we're going to be brushing this and we don't want to contaminate the material that's in here. There you go. All right, now we can set that down and then we take liberally on the whole surface. You want to apply it so you get as best coverage you can, again, to the point of runoff. Now, if this runs off existing wood, you probably would want to wipe that up or, or at least brush it out so it doesn't leave a, a texture on your painted surface already. Now, we use white vinegar to clean it up. We could also tape it off so anything would go over it. But yeah, you don't want to have that dry onto your painted surfaces that you're really not going to deal with that. If it did dry on there, you could slightly sand it and you're going to repaint it so you'll, you'll be good. But, but we want to make sure all the wood surfaces are bonded with this bonding agent. And we've done a good job right here. It's soaking in. We've got good coverage, all our cracks and crevices. And you'll see it's slightly shiny. How long do we need to wait? Again, at about 70 degrees. Let's give this 15 minutes and we're ready to apply the dough. Boy, this is going very quickly. We filled the holes with the resinous material. We've coated the surface. And now we're going to apply our repair dough. We've designed a system that you could virtually get this repair done in one day if you needed to have it done. Okay, now it's the fun part. Now we use the repair dough, part A and B. Now we're gonna use it in equal amounts. Part A is a brownish tone. I'll put that right there. And part B is a lighter tone. We're gonna to put that right there. And Arnie, tell us a little bit about how you mix this. Again, anything with the Wood Wizard system, we've mixed one to one. We're going to mix everything one to one, so there's no cute. So we've created two equal balls here, and we're simply going to put them together. Now what we're going to do is not mix it over the product, open product, but after just a little bit, fold them in to one another. It's very soft. It'll get a little bit softer. And this, you could see that the primer we put on the bonding agent is still a little tacky. This is what we want. That's heating up that bonding agent, and this will start to heat up very soon after you get it all to one color. When we're done mixing this, it's gonna be one color. And you can see now it's all one color. When you pull that apart, you don't see white or tan. And it's starting to heat up, so we're gonna place it where we need to do the repair. Could be a half inch, could be five inches thick. So you're just gonna place it over this area. 
Can you put it on real thick you or could, real thin? You could put it on real thick down to about a quarter of an inch. You can see how thick this is and it's fine. And it's sticking to the bonding agent that you've got on here. And it's heating up as we speak. Now how do they shape this? So what I like to do is use a couple different tools. A square is really important. You can get the basic shape that you have here and in just a little while we're going to show you how to trim this off to get it very close to what you need. Now do they go a little higher than what they need to be so in order to uh, have a little excess to trim? So we've got it pretty close. It's overhanging a little bit and it's gonna, like I said, harden up in just a little while. We're gonna show you how to trim that off with a couple of different tools. Here's a knife we can trim it off with. Preliminary trim. That looks pretty good over there. Now, do you sell those knives? All these, all the equipment you've seen is available at woodwizards.com or at your local retailer. And with the trim off, can they now continue to use that trim off? You could take, you could take the trim off now just and apply it on more areas that you may not have mixed enough dough up. And we always recommend mix a small amount, softball size, baseball size, until you get used to using the Wood Wizard system. Now we've just mixed our repair dough, part A and B, equal parts. We've put it on the wood, kind of rough shaped it, and Arnie, now what do you do next? The best procedure, Roger, we found is at this stage of the game, it's still not totally hard, but it's hard enough. We can trim it down close to what we have. That way we have a lot less sanding to do. And there's several tools you can use to do that. Our favorite one is an oscillating tool, and it has a blade on it that just will cut right through this. Yeah, these are real popular and actually they're not very expensive anymore. Very inexpensive now. Show us how it starts. All right. Let me give you a little... Great. Now, is there a hand method in case they don't have that? Well, you could use it. This is a popular saw. This is called a back saw. And it will do the same thing just by pulling a cross right there. You'll get the same method if you don't want to apply it. Now, Arnie, we've done a great job kind of rough shaping the wood repair, but we've got some divots here and we've got a few little voids. What happens there? The wood wizard's still curing. It's going to cure for a while here, but we've got it really looking good. We've got it pretty close to the shape. We're going to add some of our uh, putty compound onto it with some thickener to fill those voids for you because the wood wizard doesn't go on less than a quarter of inches, but this ready to use product out of the can by Wood Wizards will fill those voids with no problem. And by using some thickener, it fills in some of the areas. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Great. Well, let's mix it up. How do you mix the putty compound? I'm going to show you right now, Roger. I like to start off with about three ounces of the ready to use compound and slowly add the dry thickening agent till we get it to the consistency that it'll spread. Okay. It's it's got a semi-viscous feel to it. It's almost like mayonnaise, you might say. It's still going to need some thickening over here. Okay. So now we need to add some thickening powder into that. Now how much do you use? I'm going to use about one ounce of powder and then we'll see how it spreads. And if we need a little bit more, we'll add a little bit more. So it doesn't matter. You can put more or less in there. Up to It's up to you. It's up to you. Whatever works for the wood that you're using. If you have a little more voids that you need filling, uh, then you might put a little more thickener. You might want it a little thicker. Okay, great. Let's do that. All right. Just add a little bit into here about we're going to add about one ounce. These are 10 ounce bags and we're going to stir. You want to get that stirred up? Uh, to get it stirred up really good so that it's all one color. Everything's about one color. So the thickener is kind of a tannish color and you've got the uh, putty compound. It's a white so you're going to get a lighter version of that. You might show the everybody out there what color that it's becoming. This white, it still needs some mixing. Okay. And I can tell we're going to need a little more powder. It's still a little too thin. Okay, especially because of our yeah, voids we that we get have those on voids. here. So let's just add a little bit more powder. Sure. 
again, I think we're going to have people thinking that they have to be real precise about how much thickening agent. They're going to find out just by trying a little bit. If it's too thin, they put a little more thickener in there and keep doing it that way. We've developed it so it's easy to use and that you have a lot of leeway with it. Yep, still thickening up pretty good here. This is going to stay this way for a while in this jar so you don't have to worry about it getting hard right away. Yeah, that's a good question. If I mix a, a big batch up, how, how much time do I have? Well, generally speaking, at 70 degrees, you got an hour, an hour and a half for okay. it. It'll stay this way. I feel real good about that. Oh, yeah. You need that. That's looking good right now, Roger. Okay. It's got one color here. Okay. Now, what is it you do now? Now we're going to spread it over the area we just fixed with the wood wizard to pick up any of those small voids. A little bit over here. And we're going to take your spreader and simply spread it now. It'll spread easy now. And no, now that's that just like smooth. That's just like icing a cake. Just like your butter in a cake. Now this is getting to be fun. Isn't it? And we've done this all in this time. There's no lapse time here. Um, so can you do a repair in a day? We can get a job done in a day and so could you. We're going to put some along the front here as well. This time we're going to add some to the, to the blade here. And it's important to keep this edge clean so you don't pick up some dirt and debris in there. It becomes easy and, and understandable as long as they and follow these steps. That's correct. Now look at the voids that we had in here, and it's all filled in. I was worried about a few of those voids. Well, Roger, we've designed this to be easy for you. And a little bit right there. We're going to put a little more there. And when this dries, you can sand it, and if you need to add another coat on top of it, you can. Okay, so we don't need to do any additional preparation other than just put another coat on. Well, you notice that there's a little bit of rough texture to this. Our next stage, we're going to add a little bit of roughness back into here. I'm very pleased with what this putty compound has done. It has filled in voids, it shaped it up, and now it needs just a little texture. How do we do that? That's simple with the Wood Wizards. We've acquired and assembled for you several different grades. This is a medium grade, but looking at this wood, I could tell this is going to be the coarse grade that you're going to need. So we've already had the putty mixed in with our thickener. Now we're just going to add a little bit of our coarse uh, aggregate into it and we're going to create what you have so that when you're ready to paint this, it's going to look the same. Now this is already pre-mixed putty compound with the thickener and now you're going to additionally put in a texture to match this wood. That's correct. That's you cool. always want to start with your putty and your thickener and then add your medium or your coarse aggregates as, as you need them. So we're just going to add a little bit of this coarse in here, not very much. And again, it's too desired. You want to try a little bit at first and if it's not coarse enough, you can always add some more. So we mix this up good in here. So this is a lot of latitude here in order for you to go ahead and create a finish for the wood that you're repairing. Well, we want it to look the same as what you had there. It's like you didn't even have a finish done. Okay, we've got our course mixed up in here. We're going to apply a little bit with a little chip brush. Or you can put it on with a spreader. But let's just uh, try our chip brush first and see what kind of texture. You get to be a little bit of an artist here. So. And you're just blending that into the old in. wood to the repair. Yes, it is. And I like to go a little bit further so we get it kind of close. And so this will stick to an existing paint. This will stick exactly. And if you have little cracks in your existing paint, you can go over it with the putty and the thickener. Yep, this is looking good, Roger. Oh, it is looking good. Let's put a little bit more here. You can do... It's almost like you didn't repair it at all. That's what we want. So when this is primed and painted, it, uh, it'll look brand new again. And is it structural? This is very strong. We have several engineers on staff that work with us. If you have a repair that needs to have structural calculations or certification done with it, Wood Wizards can help you with that or your local retailer will direct you to one of our source engineers. That looks pretty good right there, Roger. I think so. 
it looks like that rough sawn lumber. Yep, give this an hour or two to dry and you're ready to prime and paint. And that's all there is to it. So now what we've done is we've come, let me move this over. We've come from here, right before your very eyes, with the, all the processes to make it structural and also beautiful again. And they didn't have to replace this great big beam or any of the wood that they needed to. So uh, I'm really very happy with what I see here. And congratulations on a great product. And this is a Wood Wizard's complete system. Yes, it is, Roger. Now you can fix almost any wood that's feasible for you and save yourself thousands and thousands of dollars. Almost anybody would have the necessity to use this product, even if it was just for little corners, outside corners of fascia boards, uh, on patio covers, on stairways, on balconies. Uh, it's almost endless. Pretty much anything that you need to fix, you can do with the Wood Wizard system. And should you have any questions, you call our 800 number for customer support and somebody will be gladly there to help you. Thank you for demonstrating and showing us how the Wood Wizard complete system works. Arnie, we're done. And we've done all the processes on this entire house. It's pretty exciting. Now what do you have to do? You're ready for prime and top coat. The whole thing's done, it's protected, and it'll last many, many, many years, Roger, without removing this whole beam. We saved this homeowner thousands and thousands of dollars. Wood Wizards. Wood Wizard system is number one. Thanks. Thank you, Roger.